السلام عليكم شو اخباركم كلكم مع حياكم الله معنا حلقه جديده البرنامج ويانا معكم يوسف الرومي علي الشكاني وطبعا عندنا اليوم ضيف مميز مميز جدا ها قبل قبل نعلن عنه الناس لو تشوف بس اللي قدام الكاميرا شنو المفروض عارفين خلاص انزين فخلنا نروح حق نحول حق الضيف يلا انزين وي وود لايك تو انتروديوس ايفري ون تو اور سبيشال جيست دي ذا كومبوزر جراند كيركولد هي جراند هلو هاو ار يو So, uh, so Grant, first of all, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for being on our show, being one of the very first guests on the show. Uh, this is, we've, we've, been, we've been doing this for less than two months. <laughs> so this is the start. And we want to apologize to anyone uh, in advance if there's any technical issues yeah. that might happen. Uh, so, so anyways, uh, Grant, um, We want to just start, you know, the talk by, you know, just, you know, if you could just tell us or tell the viewers uh, what you do and how you started. Okay, so my name is Grant Kirko. I'm a composer. Uh, I started Rare in 1995 um, as a video games guy. Um, so um, I used to play lots of uh, kind of local rock bands in the UK. Um, some bands did, some bands did well, some bands did terribly. <laughs> Um, and I did a normal kind of uh, uh, education to school, playing trumpet, classical trained trumpet player. I ended up going to university in the evening to do classical trumpet playing, so I spent four years doing that. And then I left the university, I kind of went home to, back to my mother's house and lived with my mother mm -hmm. um, for a long time. And I was kind of on unemployment benefit, which is like, a, you know, in the UK, so you can't really go to work. And a friend of mine, I've been on that for like 11 years, playing in bands, a long time. So I was 33. And a friend of mine called Robbie Beanland, who's uh, the composer at Rare Spit on DSDs, uh, said to me, you know, Grant, he, got, he, he announced he got a job at Rare. Like, I, none of my friends got jobs right, we all just didn't get the job, she was playing in bands. So it was a bit like, oh my God, he's got a job. He's, you know, so he was at Rare for about a year and a half. He said to me, you know, Grant, you've been on unemployment a long time, don't you think you should get a job? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, what, what can I do? And he said, well, what can I do what I do? You know, I'm, am I right easy to do it again? I said, well, I don't have to do that. So he said, so he recommended I got my gear, I got like a, an Atari XT computer with a Mega RAM, a copy of Cube Base, a synthesizer, and I spent about a year, uh, and he used to be like, thought it was appropriate video games. And I sent Rare five cassette tapes over the cut that year. And then they got a reply. <laughs> and then I put uh, uh, a letter saying, Grant, please come for an interview. I couldn't believe it. So I went down for an interview, and Dave Wise interviewed me. And uh, I got the job, couldn't believe it. So <laughs> that's my first job at 33. So, so uh, if Robin had a suggestion, I wrote it in. Wow, so I remember uh, Robin, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the, the three main composers at Rare at the time. It was, I think, you, uh, Robin, and David. And I believe there was also like a, a female one. As I think there was a female composer as well. Yeah, so before I got there, there was Edwin Fisher. Yes. A.Y., Rob Beanman, the Brent Norgate. They were the four guys at Rare. And I became the dish guy. So I was the oh, guy good, the okay. Actually, you know, when uh, I, I was able to meet David Wise uh, last year, when he came to visit us in Kuwait. We're going to nudge nudge. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and actually, uh, I was just talking to him, because to me, as a kid growing up, besides Nintendo, Rare was my favorite developer. Like, I, I liked Rare so much that I would bl blindly buy their games. I think I bought every single N64 game by Rare. So, um, so I was like talking to him, and I was like, yeah, you know, I like this game, and I like this game from Rare, and I like this game. And I found out that all the games, the ones that I especially liked, the, like my really favorite ones, were games that he, ha he had not composed. <laughs> It was games all by you. <laughs> You know, like, actually, like actually, uh, because, you know, like, I can see, like, a poster of GoldenEye behind you. Uh, 
I obviously, you know, love GoldenEye. Uh, the, th the funny thing is, I knew about Donkey Kong on the, on the Super Nintendo, but I actually avoided it. I, like, not because it's a bad game. It was just, I was waiting for the N64. And the, I know the fact that Rare, when they did the Donkey Kong Country for the SNES, it kind of breathed life, life into it. I, I, I understand that. But I was like, you know what? Why should I get, you know, 3D sprites when I can get the real thing, you know, like a year or two from now? Because originally it was supposed to come out in 95, the N64, but then it got delayed and delayed and delayed. So, right. so I actually knew about David Wise as a name, but I didn't realize that the, the games I liked and especially the music that I liked was actually composed by you. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I think you've done Killer Instinct? <gasps> well, so, I first got to air, uh, my first job was to convert Dave's tunes from, from uh, uh, Donkey Kong 2 and the Super NES uh -huh. to work on the original Game Boy. Okay. So I did that first. Okay. Then, uh, next game I did was uh, Goldeneye, because Graham Norgate, who was doing Goldeneye and Blast Core at the same time, got me busy with the Blast Core, and said to me, can you please help me out with Goldeneye? And I was like, wow, I'd love to do that. <laughs> but while I was doing that, because Robin Beeman, he, he was composing the Christian games. So he was actually working on the actual arcade machine. So when I got there, they were doing Killer Instinct 2. So I played the guitar parts and trumpet on Killer Instinct 2 for the arcade machine. Ooh. And so I kind of did that at the same time. But my first main game was Builder. Yeah, and that game is a classic. I mean, oh my god. Like, I, I was in high school when the, the game came out. And there was just countless nights of just, you know, death match and with friends <laughs> and staying up till like 3 a.m. and whatnot. That, yeah. that game is a, is, a, is a true classic. And then you also mentioned Blast Core. That's probably... Yeah, so I did work, yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, I did, I did work on that. That was Graham Norgate. Oh. And Graham Norgate and me, did, we did Golden Eye together. Oh. So I sort of, um, when, he worked, when he got me to Blast Core, I did Golden Eye. And I probably got... And it's hard to work for me to remember the time the timeline. So I worked on going for quite a while. And I think I did most of the level teams and Graham did all the multiplayer and some level teams too. I think I might I think we probably composed half and half. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But then um, I got asked to go and join the team that was called the Dream Team who were making that in Dream, which turned into Banjo Kazooie. So uh -huh. Graham came back to go and finish it possibly. He kind of started it. I did the middle part, he came back at the end and finished it off. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I rare during the during the SN, SNES N64 era, you guys were just beasts. You Kings. know, I honestly, honestly, I would rank you guys at maybe like in the top five developers in the industry during that era, during that time period. Everything from the graphics, the, the gameplay, the controls. Everything, everything, and then the, the British humor, you know, like, uh, what's his name, Mr. Pants, right? <laughs> right. So, uh, and, and I remember, um, obviously, you know, besides Shigeru Miyamoto, uh, one of the first names that I, like, that I, like, that I uh, remembered, like, being part of the game industry were the Stamper brothers. I think Chris, I, I, I forgot the other one, uh, Chris and something Stamper. Tim? Tim. Tim, yeah, Tim, Tim. So, um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so like, I, I think that um, in that period of time, like, Red Air was such a special place to be. Like, I, you know, when I first started working there, I felt like I was going to Disneyland. It was so <laughs> this little kind of, um, a little a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere in a town, a little village in Twycross in the UK, which is nothing in Twycross apart from a, a private school. Tractor factory, that's it. There's nothing there. David said that. He said you guys were in the middle of nowhere. There was nothing there. <laughs> nothing. There's nothing there. There's not even a shop. There's nothing. There. Wow. <laughs> so I mean, like, it's a pretty bizarre place. But it was, it was designed that way because it kept, you know, all fine. They were all working super hard on, on the games. And Tim and Chris, I think people, you can't underestimate the impact that Tim and Chris had on all the games. They were such amazing people to work for. But then uh, they had all that time working on working as ultimate play the game before before the tip became rare. And, you know, they were the first Western developer. 
Nintendo allowed to work on the sequel on the NES. Yeah, they just no. did right back then. They, because they were so good. And like I, I felt truly honored to be there. And I think that Rare, in that period of time, everybody in the company was really so switched on. We were all working so hard to try and be the best. Yeah. Um, that I think that that kind of bridge but just played into the game, especially on the Banjo thing. That was a, that team that I was on for all, 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 all the other time I was there. And um, they were, we, were a, we had such good fun together. I call them kind of, you know, the Mickey taking that we used to do out of all the team members. Everyone had a funny story about when they got cast up all the time. We hung out together after work. We were such a tight team that that's why Badger, I think, became that game because mm. the team's attitude and, and the way we, from each other, just played into the game, you know. So that's why it's like that. I think it is very British, it's, you know, very kind of Monty you know. Um, so I think, mean, like, Brer was just a, a magical place to be at that time. And, and uh, would you say that Banjo, was it Banjo or Donkey Kong 64 that that was mostly your work? So, Banjo was the first game that I did up by myself. I did all the music, all the sound effects okay. on that game. So I got pulled out of it, and then Banjo was my next game, and I did, as I say, everything you hear in Banjo is mine. Everything you hear in Banjo 2 is mine. All the music, all the sound effects. Even the sound effects? Donkey Kong 64, yeah, on wow. Donkey Kong 64, I did the music. On Perfect Dark, I just did the music. Okay. Uh, Didi Pinata did all the music on the planets. Um, Grandpa the Goonies did all the music on the sound effects. So, Brandon, uh, uh, a composer, would, would, uh, we just called sound guy tracks, so we'd get, get them, get them in a whole game. So, I would get all the banjo, the bit of conk, the deep, everything, all the music, all the effects. That was work that got into the game each. So, so uh, I think I think I missed what you said in the end. Did, did, you, did you say you worked a little bit on Conquer as well? No. So oh. Robin did all of Conquer. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so then you yeah. said, you, but you said you you worked on Donkey Kong 64. So, are you the man responsible for the DK rap? It's yeah. <laughs> 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 he wants to shake your hand. Ali wants to. Take... <laughs> Thank Actually, you very much. Uh, I'll, 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 I'm going to be honest. I I didn't really you know see where like I didn't understand why there was so much hate. Uh, hey. I I pers like on a personal level, I like the Donkey Kong rap for it for a totally different reason, because I was I had a PlayStation. So it's not like, you know, I was only Nintendo, I had other consoles, but my main console was the, you know, Nintendo, because I like, my favorite game is Zelda. My, that's my favorite franchise of all time, is Zelda, The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, me too. Me too. Oh, really? Okay. So I, I'm going to shake your hand now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, but, but, and then, you know, there was like the, 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 the console wars where like, you know, um, uh, what, what did they say? Uh, like, you know, the PlayStation is CD format, so, you know, it's going to have better audio quality and whatnot. So, I was just happy that there was, like, voice and music in a cartridge game. That's, that's, why, <laughs> that's why I like the DK rap. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, like, honestly, honestly, whether it was you or, or Robin or David, all you guys' music in the rare days is... is like I still have the the um, the kind of uh, the the what's it called that that first level from Golden Eye, um, God, I think yeah. the down. I still have that like that music in my head. <laughs> I still remember. I I kid you not. I still remember the day I bought Golden Eye, and the very first time I played Golden Eye. I still even twenty years later I still remember, like that that <laughs> game that game. Is oh my god, it's crazy. If, so if I may interject, I'd just like to say I love the DK rap, but since I didn't have the console for the games back then, I actually the first time I heard it was when you fight the giant Donkey Kong in uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee on the GameCube. All right. So when I heard that, I f instantly fell in love with it. <laughs> I don't know what Donkey Kong is. I don't know what, what, what a Diddy Kong is, I don't know what the DK crew is, but I know that Donkey Kong is the first of the DK group. And, and it's just, that, that song stuck with me. It's just, it's unbelievably. That, that's, 
And I thought it was really strange. I mean, when, I, when I did the deep gap, right, um, it was supposed to be a joke. I thought it was like monkeys rapping, it was supposed to be a joke, right? Uh, so I think all, all the little kids, like you when you were a little kid back then, right? Yeah. Like all the kids thought it was funny. All the kind of teenage guys didn't like it because they <laughs> thought it was kind of a be chappy, a bona fide rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that. I think the little kids remember it fondly. The older kids were like, this is not very good, it's not that proper pop music. You know? yeah. uh, so, uh, I think, funny enough, I, th- I feel like 20 years later, like this year's Dean is 20, 20th birthday, right? Yeah. Um, um, and it's funny that um, I think people think it's funny now. Yeah. It's taken 20 years to get to that point, right? I've had to wait 20 years to get to that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just want to go on record to say that I neither liked it or hated it. I just. But like I said, I liked it for diff- totally different reasons. You know? that, that's, a po- that's a political answer so that he doesn't get you sad. No, no, it's not. A, it's not a... <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, so um, I think, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you also did voices for Banjo-Kazooie? Some of them. So uh, Ooh. The, 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 that point, some, the, the lead programmer on Banjo, he was Banjo-Kazooie. I was Bumbo. Uh, I was the Jinjos. Um, <laughs> quite a lot of times back then, I just do the voice because it's quick for me to do it, um, and nobody else wanted to do it. Like I was, I was the voice of DK in DK sixty four. Okay. <laughs> um, so you know, I did Mukem, Fafepo, Bana, but I just picked my voice down low. Um, so it's quite funny that after DK sixty four. Tedo asked for my voice samples and used them later in the oh, game oh. for a little while. <laughs> it's quite weird. Um, I, I just did DK because nobody else wanted to do it. I was like, all right, I'll do it. I'll just do it to be quick. I wow. didn't get any care of it either. Um, so, so, you know, so I've, I've done voices in the other games I've worked on. Uh, sometimes a lot, sometimes a few. So it's, uh, it's just quick for me to do it. Okay, so so um, actually actually this brings us to to, to an, uh, a point I always I always had like in my head like I always thought about this. Almost all you guys' games like in that era, the N sixty four era, and maybe even the uh, the Xbox era, uh, you you didn't have like voices. You just had like grunts and like you know Banjo Kazooie stuff. Was that like uh, like a, a decision that was made like from the very start of development that you don't want to put like actual real voices? And what was the reason behind it? Was, yeah, no, it's because on the N64, because of the cartridge, it was tiny memory. Oh. So could or take voices in. It wasn't until Conquer that they could every three license we could get the voices compressed really small. And also the cartridge was bigger then. In golden eye days and banjo days, the cartridge was a lot smaller well, memory size. So we couldn't afford to have speech. So it was a technical so it was a technical limitation. Yes. Yeah, so it wasn't so a design. It, okay. Yeah, totally technical. We try to think of okay, rather than just have to be technical, we need to have some kind of boss up. That's where we came up with the name Eat Eat Open Up. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had to kind of get that to work. So it took a little bit of, I mean, we thought it sounded awful. We thought it sounded awful, but it's the best we could do. But people sort of liked it in the end. Yeah. Quite weird. I mean, I mean, I didn't, I didn't like, you know, dislike it or anything, but I was just like, why couldn't just put voices? I didn't know it was like a. I, I honestly thought it was a design. It was a design choice. I didn't know it was a technical limitation. Mm. Yeah, it's technical. Actually, um, David told us something, and, and I mean, this was probably before you joined uh, Rare, but maybe you know, you're, you're aware of it. He told me because of the there were such limitations on the SN, SNES cartridges, he had to code the music into the cartridge for Don, the original Donkey Kong Country. Do, do you know? Do you know yeah, anything yeah, about true. that? That's true. Yes. Yes. So, uh, as I guess when I first got there, I like to do the third day's music from the Super NES to to uh, a Game Boy, and on the Game Boy, I had to use I had to program it in with just a black screen, Linux. So there's a, it's just numbers. So I had to do, and I mean that was completely alien. So I had to do mid files and things like that. So a day show me that. It's like, this is what we do, I've like, got this is really hard. Wow. So I need to resign. I've only been there a couple of days, and I called Robert and Robert, this is too hard, I've got enough to do this, I, I just can't do it. Um, so, it was so good that he showed me really quickly, I didn't understand it. <laughs> so, I to Robert said to me, look, Graham, call Dave, you know, tomorrow morning, tell him to come back to your office, 
check me again, and I, and I wrote, he said, write it down step by step. So I said, I said, look at it. Can you please come and show me to do that again? So he came back the next day, I said, so, so step one, press all four, whatever it is. Step two, yeah. press this. Step three, I wrote it all down in Arash and like that. Wow. And I might be doing it at the end. It was super hard for me. I'd never, I'd never programmed a computer before, so wow. I had no idea what I was doing. Wow. But Dave was brilliant for me. Wow, well, that's, that's, and that's we can't good. even get Skype to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you guys, you guys, like you're really geniuses, geniuses top notch, great A, geniuses, un un unbelievable. And by the way, just so you know, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. we bit rare, right? They were really conscious of music. When I when I first got there, like Tim Stamper, he's a guy that I look the closest. And Greg Mayles, who was a designer of Banjo and all those great games, um, they loved Nintendo a lot. And also, Lucas, that's the Monkey Island games, they loved those games. All, all the early LucasArts games, like Dave the Tentacle, uh, Full Throttle, all those early Lucas, like Indiana Jones, Secret Mother, they loved those games. And they used to say, to say to me, you know, you need to be able to write music like Nintendo. So, no matter how many times you hear that Mario tune, you never get tired of it. Yeah. You need to be able to do that. And that's that's hard, right? I was like, yeah, oh my god, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. do that. You know. True, true, so yeah. You need to really you need to really preach that to learn that technique to kind of learn that the best thing you can do is to write a great catchy melody. So other guys I know from back then really know how to write a catchy. And I we always try to write something memorable melody so you can remember it. That's why I try to all the time, even to the day. So I think that being part of that Red Air Bed was super great training for me because it's, you know, Tim Stanford and Rick Belt and all the guys at Red really came out. You see, that's why everyone there, Dave, Robin, me, Kobe, and Esther, we all wrote pretty good music because we, we tried to go out, try to write pretty good music, and put stuff on the top to create music. Mm. I mean, that's, that's probably the best environment for you to, uh, to uh, actually grow as a, as a composer, as a as a, as a musical artist. Yeah, totally. Nice. So, um, so anyways, uh, I just wanted to kind of just switch, switch topics for a little bit. Uh, what did you think when uh, I, I contacted you and said, I want to do an interview with you, like someone from the Middle East? Like, did you ever think that, you know, you have fans outside of your, you know, the traditional, like, Japan, Europe, U.S. Yeah, I guess, you know, a lot of times people forget about the Middle East. Yeah. You know, you forget that there's people that live there, you know, because it's, it's almost, I guess because I'm an English speaker, and, and your dog has English is great, but I guess you kind of think, you know, that it's like, like you went to Europe, and America, we kind of go to the left, like, on the flat. Right, right, you know, right. You don't think about it, but bit metropolitan centers, there's hundreds of thousands of millions of gamers in the Middle East, it must be right. <laughs> so, no, I, I, I'm, super, I'm super honored you wanted to talk to me. So, I think it's great. I think that, you know, the more, I, th I think get is, is a gigantic thing in the world. I think it's gigantic. Everybody loves games. Yeah. Uh, so, I kind of feel like it's, it only makes sense that there's great big games happen in the Middle East, right? It makes total sense. You know, actually, um, since, you know, you've worked with David and you know David very well, when I first contacted him initially, you know, uh, a year ago, and he accepted, you know, to come and everything, and it was it was all good, but there was like I, I guess you could say there was one thing that we disagreed on, and that was basically I said, David, I think you should have like some kind of booth, you know, and he said, and and the thing is with David, he's like super humble, like like super 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 humble, and he's like, no, you know. It's not worth it. I don't want to, you know, put extra stress on you or, or uh, cost you any more money or, or, you know, whatever, you know, he said at the time. And I said, no, 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 I, it's not about money. Like, you really need it. And he said, no, 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 it's okay. And you cannot imagine the number of fans that were, like, swarming him <laughs> in the expo. <laughs> and then I remember he came to me, like, a few hours after the first day, and he was like, I should have taken up, taken you up on your offer. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys, like, my, my point of the story is, you guys have no idea 
the, the large amount of fans that you guys have over here in the Middle yeah. East, but because, you know, we've been a neglected region for, you know, for so long, uh, like, these things, like, they, it's very rare that they happen. You know, like, uh, uh, people like, you know, uh, David, or, you know, Square Enix coming, and, you know, those kind of, those kind of, like, big names, like, it just doesn't happen. You know, like it's like a, it's like a dream come true for some of us. You know, yeah. when when we see you know so and so is attending and stuff. So, I just wanted to just kind of get your your point of view on that. But yeah, you're right. There's like thousands, hundreds of thousands of you know gamers and fans and and what have you. And yeah. and, 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 and it's always a pleasure like uh, seeing you guys uh, like in, in the flesh. You know, <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's a different experience actually seeing the guys you've. The guys who've made the games you've played. Your childhood. Your, your childhood. childhood. They, they made like a huge part of your childhood and you actually see them in the flesh. And not like, and not me going to the United States and seeing them, but actually them coming over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, it's mind blowing. And I didn't even play them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, I mean, I remember what. Yeah, sorry, go. Yeah, sorry. I, I think, I think um, in, in the West here, right? We don't get to hear about the Middle East very much in the news, apart from all the bad things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So we, you know, I, I guess we just don't want to think that you guys are obvious. You know, <laughs> and also, I think it's, and also, I feel like, I kind of feel like an ordinary guy who just writes music for a job. Right. I don't feel special. So when you say people meet you, I'm a bit like really, like you know, I'm just a composer that's been. I'm not very involved, you know, so I think that, I think none of us feel like we're, we have, we have, we have no egos, right? We don't feel like we're stars or anything like that. I just feel like I'm the same as you. I just write music for a job, <laughs> you do your job, it's right. just the same, right? Right, right, so right. I don't, think any, I don't think any of us feel so flat, so, you know, it's just, it's just a weird thing, you know, I, I feel <laughs> like I've got like 80,000 Twitter posts, right? And I just think, how on earth, I have not that many Twitter followers. Like, what, what do I be doing? It's, it's important, but it's a bit weird. You know, so, it, you know, it, it's very humbling, you know. And like, I also think recently, kind of, I, I understand that, like, I was a kid, right? And I watched Scoop, Dido, and Thunderbird, and all cartoons that I liked as a kid. Like, I can remember, I think in that age group, like, five to twelve, you know, I think you remember all the theme tunes, and all the lyrics, and all stuff, right? Yeah. So, so when, so, so when kids, like you were, I played the games that I worked on when you're between five and twelve. Do you remember that forever? Right. right? Yeah, like right. I remember, I remember all my favorite cartoon shows forever <laughs> till yeah. I die. I think you just do that. So I think that it's taken a little while for me to understand that people, if you get, if you get to be a little kind of on somebody's childhood, it's amazing because they never forget it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that um, I think just take a little bit of a at the times you don't. I didn't understand that for a very long time. So I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's just unbelievably humble to think that, you know, people like, you know, I always, I always say that the one that knows the world to like something that's come out of my head <laughs> is incredible, right? Right. I mean, there's one person. Exactly. You know. Exactly. But I mean, I mean, actually, uh, one, one of, uh, when, when it was announced that David Wise was attending last year, you you were actually the most uh, asked about person after we announced David Wise. I'm not I'm not I'm not joking. I'm not trying to you know like be nice to you. I'm being I'm being honest. You know that I, I I remember and I saw this with my own two eyes inside the expo. There were like random people like just visitors going up to David and they were like, "How's Grant doing? Where is Grant? Like, what does he do right now?" <laughs> Oh no! Why and actually, I... and actually, <laughs> the reason, the whole reason that we're having this interview with you right now, is was because after you know the show finished and everything, and you know I sat down with David and you know kind of just uh, talked about feedback and stuff. He was like, "Oh my God! Like, let forget that I'm well loved here and people like you know know me and you know love my work." People were asking about Grant Kirkhope, and he actually was was the one 
who said, I should contact you to interview you. He said, he said I think, you know, Grant will get a kick, you know, of, of knowing that he has, like, you know, fans in the Middle East, like, you know, all, like, all these countries and stuff. So you should, you know, contact him. I contacted you. You were, like, super nice and everything. You were like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no, I think, um, you know, it's been dead a good friend. So, you know, we, at the end, it's not very rare. We formed a little band together. We used to play pubs together. Oh. He played sax and keyboards, and I played I sat and another guy played guitar. We used to do rock covers and stuff like that in pubs. We didn't laugh, do you know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're good friends, we made it. Okay, yeah, that's no, that's nice. So, anyways, um, just to uh, Going back to questions. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I have, I have, I have a personal question. Since you worked, you worked a little bit on Killer Instinct. Um, you, I, were you uh, at Rare? I don't think you were, but I'm just making sure. Were you at Rare when Killer Instinct, the first one, came out, or were you there for number two? No, number two. Number two. Because my question was, uh, for this for the Super Nintendo release, it was released with the Killer Cut CD. Right. Oh my God. I must have... <laughs> I was, I don't know, I was 12 or 11 years old at the time or something. I had that, 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 that the way you move, like on repeat, on loop, for like two years or something. <laughs> yeah, Robin wrote that music. My friend Robin wrote it on Killer Instinct 1. Robin just did Killer Instinct 2 uh, by himself. So the Killer Cut CD is fantastic. Yeah. It's totally fantastic. It's just, it is, it when is. I, when I was, not, I was working at Rare then, right, and I was like, oh my god, I'd love to work there. Because <laughs> the copies of my brain wrote such great music, I was like, I want to be there, I want to be there. And I, I sent the cassette tape and never got a reply. I thought, I'm never going to get there. <laughs> and then, you know, complete flip. I mean, you know, I got there at the end, but that Killer Cut was fantastic. And then oh. jumping, jumping like ahead to the future. Now I believe your latest game was Ukulele that actually released uh, three days ago, correct? Uh, two days ago. Yeah. Yes. So can you, can you tell us about that? Like I, I know it was like the Platonic team, which is like X Rare guys. So like how did that co you know come together and stuff, and how were you involved? So you know Ukulele, the first game came out a year ago, the VD one, and and. Uh, and I, I, I know those guys super well because we've been working on teams together for sure. a few years. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we did that at Aiden. I did that with yeah, Steve Burke. We did the music together. And because it was a 3D game, did most of the music. Because I've done that kind of 3D platform thing more. Yeah. But we always said, depending on what the next game is, it might change the, the kind of lead composer. So the way it comes the new game, you can only do it somewhere left. It was more of a 3D game, which games has done a lot of great 2D music on country almost games, you know, you know. So we thought so Dave should be the lead goes on the next one. So the UK great game, I just the overworld that's in 3D. And Dave has done the levels. Also though, there's two guys that work at Plato Park, Dan Murdoch and Matt Griffin. They they're in-house guys and they've done most of the music on this one. So I've done the least, Dave's done the next, and Matt and and uh, that in the moment. Okay. Okay. So, and is that the same for both ukuleles, like the first one and the second one, or just the first one? No, the first, no. so that first one I did the most. Oh, oh. I did the least, the least, the least. But the new game, the impossible player, I've done the least, they've done the next, and then Dan and Matt have done the most. Okay, okay. And, and uh, you had a question? So, uh, talk, uh, while we're talking about composing for newer games, what did it feel like to actually compose a piece for Super Smash Brothers uh, Ultimate? What what, what were going through your head? That was that was absolutely unbelievable. Like um, <laughs> got uh, uh, Soliani, who's the uh, creative director of Ubisoft Milan, mm -hmm. looked like the Mario Rabbids game for. Um, he we were good great friends for all those days. Uh, even after the game finished, we were really great friends. Then. He emailed me to say, uh, Grand Nintendo, uh, uh, want to get help with me? Can I pass on your email information? I was like, of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what to be. I thought, I kept thinking, it must be Banjo, but I didn't know. <laughs> and so I got an email from them, a very kind of short email, this thing, dear Grant, uh, we have a project, we'd like your assistance to talk. Uh, we'd like you to write a piece of music between two and a half minutes and three minutes long. 
based on an existing IP, I boosted. And that was it. Wow. <laughs> I was like, of course I am. I was like, yeah, I was like, cars and children just doing that. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of time to sort out the NDA, the non-disclosure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I keep secret. I took about a month to sort out. Uh, and then when it finally signed that, it said, you know, said yes, it's good time to be in Smash, and I couldn't believe it. Because I really thought, that, because they've never what? ever used, they've never used the Western Technical Puzzle before. They always yeah. used Japanese in place. Yeah. They were really brilliant to do all the Smash communities, right? So I kind of thought, it can't be a bad thing. <laughs> Even when, it, when they put in K Rule, they, they didn't ask Dave to do the music. Because, you know, Dave should have done the K Rule music, they didn't ask him to do that. Right? Yeah, I was like, yeah. they didn't ask Dave. They're not going to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> So I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my god, you know. So they sort of said yes. So Banjo, they said, he said you can pick any piece you like, or you can literally have a few pieces together, like whatever you want. And they sent me like a PowerPoint document that kind of had a, it showed how much of the Smash music goes. So basically, at the start of the piece, it's like four percent of an intro, go straight into Nadine, nice and loud, get a bit, take it down a bit towards the end, and then loop it around to the balloons. It's very loud. Okay, cool. Very cool. So, so the Smash Brothers piece, I, I just so I kept thinking, you know, what Angelo piece should I do? And I thought maybe Matt Moss and Adrian, maybe Treasure Trove Code. And I thought, oh no, it should be Spark around because the start of the game, everyone knows Spark Mountain, so I chose that one. <laughs> so I wrote a thing that was like 60 bars, and I sent it across to them. And so the bit in the tune at the end, it's a big old kettle, that was the start of the I wrote that first of all, thinking, oh yeah, this part, like the PowerPoint I couldn't say. Yeah. Send it off to the other like, it's great. You know, carry on with it. I thought, I thought, I need to put Banjo in there for definite. So I'm going to put that Banjo section that's at the start after the orchestral section. Okay. So I put that in. Then I said, oh, you like that. I think now it's better. You start start with Banjo in this section. Keep it nice and chunk by small. And then go for the big epic up because you're at the end. And make it as epic as you want, as easy you like. And they said, I think that minds now. I'd like you to just stick to the Sparrow Mountain tune and don't put these any other music. Maybe you can have little quotes, other pieces, to keep it spiral mountain. The kind of, it went, the, the popular committee said opposite to that. So they kind of switched it in opinion. And so we think it sounds great because we don't have any of the music in, in Smash that sounds like that. You know, mm -hmm. that big old epic old metal thing. So, uh, so I switched around, put the banjo bit at the start, kept it nice and dry, not, not a little echo, and then did the big orchestra bit at the end, and I put in some little references to other machines, you know, in, in music. So you, you can pick out the little banjo of like 10 second reference, you know. And Mr. Sakurai was like, because you speak, because this is not great. I'm just going to get Mr. Sakurai through a game Nintendo called Paul Logue. He's a this guy like me. Uh, he works in Japan, Nintendo Japan. And I would, uh, Paul would say, Mr. Sakurai says this, and I'd say, right, I'll go back and talk like that. Right. And that was it. Um, and then after I wrote it, they wrote to me to say, um, I think it's going to be logic, it's going to be grand. And I knew that it was the Spiral Mountain fighting step, it's all of it. I never saw Banjo fighting on it, I only saw other characters on it. They didn't send me Banjo, I never saw Banjo fight. And then um, said to me, actually, we're, we're thinking now that come to E3, we're going to use your music truck. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> that's, that's, that's amazing, you know. But I didn't know that the, the, in the trailer, the, the old Mini Mind music, the, I, I thought they'd use all the pieces of the, the guys, you know. The remix, but this is my app, believe it, you know, it's incredible. So, when, and then we, when it came to the ET, the announcement that we looked at, so can I, can I tweet out that I did it, you know, on the E3 days? So, because of course you can. But can you let us know what you're going to say? Because they wanted to make sure I didn't say anything they didn't like. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I tweet, I tweet out. I did have a video of me saying that Angel with the whole with a little banjo puppet thing, and they had to see the video too. So, I said, look, but also, you can't tweet it out anything until the, the music and Banjo put it up on the Smash Brothers website. So even, even though they announced it at like 9.40 in the morning, yeah. my time, PST, yeah. I, it, it wasn't on the Banjo site until 11 o'clock. Oh, and so I, you had to wait like two hours before you could... Yes, my, my, yes, my Twitter, my Twitter was going... I couldn't say anything, you know, so <laughs> I like, oh, so I could tweet at yeah, 11 o'clock, so I was so excited. But also, but, but I had seen the trailer, so when you guys saw the trailer the first time, that's when I saw it. I saw oh. it, so I was like, oh, yeah. so I cried like a... <laughs> 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 no, no. Like, so, I've seen the... 
you know, I'm reacting on the on all over the place, and then they'll still New York. All the fans went crazy. The end crap again. It's only. So, so uh, uh, just a uh, quick question about what you just said. Uh, you didn't actually compose the music for the trailer. They just took a, a piece that you composed already for Smash, and they just used it for the trailer, correct? Yeah, it was just back to the piece I composed for Smash. Oh, okay. And the piece the trailer. Okay, okay. Yeah, oh my god, the reaction for the banjo reveal, it was like, everybody went crazy yeah, for that. Yeah, especially, you know, you know how you can find the hardcore fans? The ones that went crazy when the Jiggy... Bounced, uh, yes. through the room. <laughs> and, yes. and I think I blinked during the trailer because I did not see the jiggy. <laughs> and then I saw the silhouette and I just freaked. Because even right. though I didn't play banjo on the uh, 64, N64, 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 yeah, I didn't play it on the N64, I played it on the Game Boy Advance, I think. Right. There was a version for that, so I played it there. I heard the tunes. And I saw the characters and I played a lot of the game on the Game Boy Advance and that's where I fell in love with him. So when I actually saw him in Smash, it's, 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 yeah, you know, it, it's, it's not as comparable as your feeling, but it, it's, it's still <laughs> like, like, dude, it's actually, he's actually in it. Banjo and Kazooie are in it. And it's like, it just opens the floodgates for all like the other Western mascots. That I, I really want, uh, that I'd really like to see. By the way, if you didn't figure it out, Ali is a huge Smash Brothers fan. <laughs> <laughs> if that actually, wasn't clear. Actually, the, the, the t-shirt that he's wearing right now, it's part of a local um, Kuwaiti uh, right. tournament organizers that organize Smash Brothers tournaments. Wow. wow. So, <laughs> actually... I think it's just, yeah. it's just for me, right, so, you know, after doing Mario Rabbit, you know, I was just Western composer to do work on Mario, which I just couldn't believe. It was just <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's, I just wanted to say that. I think you're the first Western composer on Smash, correct? Yeah, I think so. So, like, say Mario and then doing Smash Brothers is just like super crazy. Like, you know, I mean, how did that Mario happen? Like, Mario, how did, that, how did that happen? Like, did you get like a call out of nowhere? Hey, we, we want you to do a Mario game. Like, like, how did that happen? Yeah, so it's like Nick like Milan who did that. Anyway, so right. I got an email from their producer who's called Gianmarco Zana uh -huh. on LinkedIn. Just said, you know, we've got a game that you might be good to compose for. I do it. And I was like, of course. So when they find out the details, they're just called Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. So I thought it was a Rabbit's game. Oh, okay. I thought it was some cool characters. Like, talk out to them, they don't like the mint, you know, I think they're really funny. So I was like, great. So they flew me across to Paris to meet with Dan Reliani and uh, Romain Brio, who's the audio director. Yeah. So I went, I went to the studio in Paris, uh, met with the guys, and they, they took me through the back of the studio to a big security door. Oh. And to get a code to get through. I was like, this is a bit strange, it's just a rabbit's game. Right? <laughs> so, so I got through the door, and then I got taken to a side room, and Dan Reliani was there, uh, and Romain was there. When I sat down, the guy said, well, I bet you show the show game, right? So I said, you're right. So we need to turn TV on. Mario was still there. And I, and I, thought, I thought maybe they'd been playing Mario, you know, because they got bored, what did we do right, you know? And yeah. So when he started to the control, like, I started to move around. I was a bit like, what's, what's that? So it's a Mario game, did no one tell you? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you know, they, they, they said they thought I didn't like the game because I sat there for an hour, super quiet, the wind be quite peace, because I was panicking, <laughs> I'm very thinking, how, you know, how am I going to follow in Koji Kondo's footsteps? Koji Kondo is a man, that's right. Right. Uh, how am I going to do Super Mario? I'm just going to make a memory, it's going to be dreadful, they're going to paint me, you know. Uh, I was going, even though, like home, I was struggling, you know, how am I going to do this? I'm, I'm, it's just not possible, I, I can't possibly do this game. <laughs> Kakondo, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I just couldn't believe it, you know, so that was reasonable. But it was just a fantastic experience. The guys at Milan, Paris, and, and, and did the game together, doing this stuff, and there's such a fantastic team of people. And the guys in Milan are just massive Nintendo fans, that they, they hold Mario in such high regard, you know, the, the passion in the game is so fantastic. That it's just an absolute pleasure to do that. It was such great fun doing it, we had a great laugh. We, God, my house on fire. Yeah, just fantastic. Yeah, it was a great game. I, 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 my favorite genre is probably strategy games. So, you know, it being like, you know, a strategy-based game. And 
with Mario. Yeah. And the, the one thing I liked about it, there was no like randomness in the hits. Because a lot of those right. strategy games, it'll say 99% you're gonna hit, and then you're gonna, and then you miss. Oh, no. In, in Mario yeah. Rabbids, if it said, it, 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 there was, it was always a hit. There was no, yeah. you know, RNG. Or Unless something was blocking your Blocking, you, yeah, yeah. But, but you know if you're going to hit or yeah. not. Yeah. So, yeah, that it's was... A, it's a really great game. It's a great game, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing. And, and I'm actually surprised that Nintendo allowed Mario to be used in a game like, you know, like a strategy yeah. shooting game. You know, shooting, you know, quote-unquote shooting. Uh, but it turned out great, and everybody remembers that that moment when David was crying on yeah. the E three yeah. stage. <laughs> I think I think you were there too, right? In that during the announcement. Yeah, was, did you cry? Yeah, the other day. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was sat just next to him. Um, so I said, "I think the just came with the design. He has to go. He had to go to be about to go. Yeah, just doing, you know, in <laughs> San Francisco." And uh, Gavinet was like just shaking, he was so nervous. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Miyamoto loved it. And also, all the animations, they, they did a rough demo of Unity uh, to show Mr. Miyamoto. Mr. Miyamoto thought that Nintendo gave Gavinet the animations to marry because it was so perfect. And Gavinet said, No, we did that by ourselves. Wow. We just worked out ourselves. I said, Mr. Miyamoto didn't believe it. He said to Gavinet, Look, you can take Mario, you can, you can break it. We can't do some of these things. We can't keep Mario going. But you can. Like, we, you know, we, we took a platform game before we got that. We need to make it still game. Give Mario, you can do what you want with Mario, break him, but we can't, things that we can't do. So Davide was like, right. So Davide being there designed such a fantastic game. It's such a great concept. And it's just a few, I'm going to play Mario Rabbit's game and go, what? That's crazy, right? <laughs> it did sound like a great idea, but once you play it, it's a really great idea. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, just like talking to you right now, because you know, ukulele just came out like a, a couple of days ago. Uh, a couple of days ago, actually, it's right now in Kuwait. Thursday is our weekend, so our weekends, right. our weekends are like a little bit different than than the West, so just by by, by a day. So okay. um, I was actually planning to uh, buy ukulele, the impossible layer, like, you know, like today, like tonight or like, you know, tomorrow. But like talking to you right now, like I want to play it right, right now because I want to, I want to be honest, you know, I, I like to be honest. Uh, the first ukulele, I, I skipped the 3D one because there was only one thing that, that Rare did that I personally didn't like was that the collectathons. There was a lot of collecting in, in Rare games. And I think it was like a little bit too much. So when, when I heard it was like a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie and that the item collecting is back, I was like, I'm gonna pass. But the fact that this one is a 2D, ver 2D version, I don't know why it caught my attention. Maybe it reminds right. you of uh, Donkey Kong Country? No, no I, I, had no I didn't play Donkey Kong Country when I was a kid. So, so I don't know why, but uh, specifically the 2D version, like. I was actually planning to get it like, you know, like in the next couple of days, but I think I'm going to just d download it like now, like after we do this, I'm going to just, you know, download it. Yeah, you should. Yeah, uh, I it's, will. It's, it's, it's really good. It's really good. It's good. It is, it is. I, I saw the reviews and everything, word of mouth, yeah, my friends. Yeah, I mean, I mean um, uh, kudos to uh, your development team, yeah, uh, because they, they really turned it around. I mean, the difference uh, between the reviews from the first ukulele game and this one is like night and day. So, uh, congratulations. Yeah, I think also, yeah, I think, yeah, I think this ukulele first game was a studio band. It has a big learning curve there. Yeah. Even, though you've, even though you've worked at a company for years, when you get to do it yourself, it's different, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a limited budget. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to, try, you've got to try and do the best you can. You know? So, I feel like first game has, has some flaws, but it's, it's still a, a, quite a good from game. Mm -hmm. it's, um, I just think that some of the reviewers are harsh. Yeah. It wasn't. Still worth an eight out of ten. It really is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but some review the harsh on it. Um, but you know, that's a risky tech, right? You never know. You just never know. How to, you, know you just you cross your fingers over the best. Yeah. And and uh, Grant, uh, was there any uh, piece that you composed throughout your your career that was particularly hard to compose for or or come up with the composition for? Honestly, not really. 
Okay. And I feel like, I feel like, you know, I just, it's hard to answer that without sounding big, I'm not, I'm not big. <laughs> um, it's just that, um, I, 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 I wouldn't tell anything like, right, I can write, I really can't find anything else. I'm absolutely useless in anything else. But my wife says to me, you know, can you put my thoughts up and I'll knock the wall down, you know. I'm just, I'm so useless. So, I, all I can do is I'm useless, but I'm just trying to this. But I, I really feel like, it's like, it's just storytelling. It's having a good imagination. It's, listen to me, it's a, it's a frozen ice forest or a frozen ice castle. You know, I'm thinking about spiky music and, it's got to be yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a kind of string and strip away, you know. So I think that <laughs> my mind just works that way. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd say that usually, I, you know, I might have to, I have to write a piece of music for a developer. I'll probably get it right in two or three times, most of the time. I don't go really beyond that. But when I did the Smash Brothers piece, I think it did like twelve versions of that, or like to get it right for Mr. Sakura. But not quite honestly, I would have done 12,000 birds in this assignment. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, yeah, so I kind of feel like, um, you know, I think it's all important to have a good relationship with the people that you're working for. Yeah. And I don't mind doing things again. I don't mind. If, if, you know, working for Gavin for Mario, you know, he'd say, I like that, I don't like that. I change it. I don't mind doing that, you know, because I think that when you hire yourself out as a freelance guy to somebody, you know, it's just like when you hire the county fix your car or the gardener or right. whatever it is. It's just right. Like, right? You, you, you know, when I hire someone to fix my car, I want to fix it the way I want it fixed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. someone hires me to write music, what we do at least what they want it, that's fine by me. I kind of feel if you want to be a composer where well, you're in charge, you can make a symphony or your own pop song or whatever, that's great, right? You do that, that's your thing. But when that pays up, that's somebody else, you need to do what they want. I don't, I don't have a problem with that at all. No, so, so, so basically, uh, you, like if someone just tells you like, I want a piece that is, you know, this kind of theme, you can just like, just do it then, basically. Yeah, I think, so. I think most composers, you know, worth the salt these days can do it. I mean, like, sometimes you'll get some media to watch or a bit of gameplay or a design document or a bit of a sentence. I don't mind any of those things. I mean, it's just about to post people. There's a chance you can talk to the other guys. People don't know any kind of music you know, in its heart. So I always say, if you need to tell me what kind of style you want to write and what you're writing, you know, show me a YouTube clip of a movie that you like, or yeah. send me a three file of the tune that you like, yeah, and yeah. in the right direction, like an idea, you know. So it's find that kind of compromise between you that isn't musical, but that it could get us to be what they want. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's part of fun. Yeah. It's part of the fun, like, it is, stuff. it is. Get, uh, uh, become other people, it's good fun, you know. And, and, and um, about, I think, a year ago, a year or two, uh, probably a year ago, uh, I saw a video of you playing guitar with someone, like, next to a pool yeah. or something. Like, okay. when I saw that video, I was like, okay, I like Grant right now. This guy is cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that, is that your main yeah. instrument? So, uh, I was classically playing trumpet player. I school from I started playing trumpet at age six. Oh. And I went to school at university as a classical trumpet player. But I'm a, I'm a self taught mental trumpet player from like 12. Okay. 12. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm still a metal fan now, right? So I can't call the fan music jewels. That's easy, that's easy name. So we good friends. And he's in a band called Sound Jewels. And they're all the same age. Yeah. And they play like Sound Jewels. Yeah. And they're all the same age. And he's in a band called Sound Jewels. And they're all the same age. And they're all the same age. And they're all the same age. And they're all the same So in fact, when they got together, and it's, it's about to do a final battle, that's been together. That's my house, that's my pool, that's my house. Yeah. So we just did the video there. And so that's great fun to do. So yeah, really <laughs> good fun. So yeah, honestly, honestly, I like when people just, you know, chill and just do random winging. stuff and w winging it, you know? That's, I think that's, yeah, that's how you should live. Yeah, I try to do that. Sometimes it's happened I've got a wife and kids, I try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, uh, 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 last year in Kuwait, uh, David actually like the, the first day he was a little bit scared or um, anxious or nervous like he didn't know like what he should or shouldn't do and I kept telling him like hey just do whatever you want you know like you know just do whatever you want like don't don't let the negative propaganda you know affect you so he did a performance and he just killed it all right he was like on stage and he, he was I think you know him Nigel his friend yeah, so they came and everything, and then after he saw that the fans loved what he did, 
he actually was walking randomly around the expo and on his sax, just playing tunes, just walking around randomly, like one of those, uh, like those, the, 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 those, those, like you know, people you see like in Europe, like you know, you, you uh, on the street, like uh, they play music to, for change or something. That's what, and, like he was just like chilling, just like walking around. <laughs> you know, that's 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 what I like. You know, that's that's when I see someone do something like that, I actually feel more comfortable around them, to be honest, because right. that's that's kind of my personality, you know. Uh, you know, as as uh, as well. So that was. And, and what's the name of that guy that you did the, the video with? Uh, can you remind me of the name? So he's, 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 he, yeah, he's, he's a name. It's family Jew. It's family. Right. Jew, uh, yes. Right. Seven, 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 seven. So I mean, he's just lots of video game covers on guitar. He's a he's Jules Conroy. But um, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. I met through a friend of mine called Danny Baranowski. So he, he, he's a good friend with him there. He's a lot of three video games on guitar, he's brilliant, he's a fantastic guitar. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think the thing about, like, we just said, oops, I don't know, put on the anybody else, right? I just like music, you know, I kind of think, you know, we're not rock stars. We are, I just want to be people to slag you, you know, we're not different, right? We're not, you know. And so I think that that's part of it, that I think people, you know, like to meet us because we just are like you. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not special at all, you know, so. I think that's why video games is a great thing because I think we all feel we're in it together, right? All those video games guys, we're in it together. That's that's it's like it's like a fan thing. We're all fan, fan, we're all fans of video games. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, I, I think that's what makes a difference, you know. Sure. And and uh, if there was like a a franchise or a game that that obviously you haven't worked on, like what what franchise would you like to work on? Like what is something that that catches you? Yeah. What, what, sorry, say, say again. Zelda, Zelda, Zelda! Zelda, <laughs> Zelda yeah, my man, my man. You, did you see the shield? Yeah. 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 <laughs> my, my favorite game of all time right, is, is uh, Zelda I mean, to match on the Super NES. That's my favorite Zelda title. Okay, that's my first Zelda title. Yeah, I, 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 I spoke it out, but I loved that game. I looked it on the NTC, I loved it on the Super NES. I thought Link to the Past was fantastic. The music's fantastic, the game's fantastic. My favorite game of all time. So what do you think of Breath of the Wild? So they're all awesome. They're all fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> There's no such thing as a bad Zelda game. <laughs> no, there's not. No, they're, they're all fantastic. Fantastic. All but fantastic. hey, I mean, I mean, in in a in a sense, you actually uh, got to do something bigger than Zelda, which is Mario. <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, I think so. But I mean, you know, I think, I, mean, I like the RPG games. I like, I like those. And I like Zelda a lot. Okay. My favorite games of all time. So. Yeah. You know, I'm never going to catch them, but it'd be great to them. Well, here's the hoping. And, and have, you, have you ever done... <laughs> have you ever uh, done any uh, live performances? Of my music? Yeah, like of, like game, of game music. No. No. Ah, then I think I know a place where you would do your performance. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, um, because actually uh, this year we, we were able to do the first official Final Fantasy uh, orchestra in the Middle East. Wow. So, uh, yeah. you know, finally, because that was actually my dream. By the way, I, I, I want to be on record. Like, I don't consider myself like um, a music uh, fan like, uh, or like a big lover of music. But f don't ask me why my dream was to do a video game orchestra. Yeah, and, yeah. and after like almost 10 years, I was able finally to do it like a few months ago. Yeah. So, uh, good. yeah, but, but you have, you've never done any live, uh, okay, well, have you done live, live performance for non-video game stuff? Probably. Yeah, a lot of people just do a video games, like the Mario, Viva Pinata, Bad Games and Bolts. Uh, Kingdoms Armor, Lord, Reckoning, Stigmatization games. I've done, I've used live orchestra for those games. Mm. I've never done a live performance, not yet. Is it like, do you, do you, do you not want to, or is it just like, a, like a, the opportunity just didn't come up? No one's asked me. Oh, <laughs> but like, but you personally like wouldn't mind, I mean. I'd love to do it, I'd love, I'd love to do an orchestra gig. If I'm fantastic, like, it would be, that may be my best thing ever to do that. Okay. Cool. Okay, I would just, you know, I would just, because, you know, some musicians uh, say they're either, like, shy 
or or they're afraid or whatever. I just wanted to know like if there was like any limitation on your end. For no, no way. Like you just forget. Like I spent a long time doing a rock band, right? Oh, band. Like, oh, okay. Stage, right? so, okay. I'm not shy. No way. I'm not shy. <laughs> So you, you had, uh, I think, uh, a question. No, no, I'm, uh, I'm sufficiently uh, fulfilled, satisfied, yeah, satisfied, satisfied. <laughs> and and uh, Grant, uh, is there, is there like maybe this, this is a question of like you know I love all my children equally, but do you have like a favorite game that you compose for or anything like that? That's a hard one. That is, it's one that's in the track. Yes, but um, that's a hard. I think that's like quite a lot. It's hard. Yeah. So I, I guess you know I've got to think about Banjo Kazooie special for me because that game seems to be, everyone seems to talk about Banjo Kazooie forever and ever and ever. Yeah. You know, that's amazing. Um, I love to do Peter Pinata because that's my first time using the Magistro. Okay. Um, I I love to work on Mario Rabbit because it's really amazing. You know. <laughs> um, but I've been looking at you know, all the games that I've worked on. I've really liked all of them. I maybe part one. <laughs> like I'm not in a game I had liked, so but um, I've been really lucky to work on good games. That that's that's really good. Well, anyways, uh, Grant, that's basically uh, we're almost at the end of the the episode. Um, you know, we had a blast talking to you. Yeah. It was like it was like getting all, like all this like information and stuff. That's really really cool. We, I just want to say again, thank you so much, you know, for for coming on this show and and being part of like you know the very beginning yeah. of this show. I really appreciate it. Um, if you could just uh, just stay online, we just want to say something to uh, to the viewers, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll kill the stream. But I just want to say something to you after after we we finish. So if you could just stay online for just like a minute. So, anyways, يعطيكم العافية يا شباب اللي شافونا اليوم ما قصرتوا شايف اليوم باللقاء مع جرانت ها قوي صراحة الرجال صراحة تحفة 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 فإن شاء الله نشوفكم الأسبوع الجاي وفي مفاجآت مفاجأة حلوة بعد الأسبوع الجاي هم أن ترقبونا لا مو أسبوع الجاي ممكن الوراء الوراء يعني سون 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 يلا جماعة يعطيكم العافية مشكورين ما قصرتوا